yeah we back we back now we got a very interesting video to talk about i don't know if y'all heard about it but there's a new movie coming out on the life of hannibal barker you know the legendary african general yeah the legendary african general and denzel washington is being cast in a star leading role and i want to talk about that man that's very uh that's very interesting to me let's get into it as you can see by the headline denzel washington will terrorize rome as the legendary general hannibal barker Denzel Washington will play Hannibal, the Carthaginian warrior who attacked Rome atop elephants. Man, <laughs> we got to talk about that. Definitely got to talk about that. Now, in case you didn't know, Hannibal Barker is regarded as one of the greatest military leaders in the history of military engagement. And like many legendary figures throughout history, especially legendary black men throughout history, they've either been ignored or their identity has been, you know, not really, not really solidified. But as you can see by this movie, it's no doubt in anybody's mind Hannibal Barker was a black man, first of all. And the military engagement that solidified his name into the history books until the end of time was when he marched into Rome on top of the goddamn elephants with thousands of his shooters behind him. Man, listen, bro. I said it before and I'm going to say it again. The black man of yesterday, he was on some other shit, man. The black man of yesterday, listen, that was a different type of black man. That was a different type of black man. I don't know if that black man is still in production. But let's get back into it. Let's jump into some of these articles. Take a look up on the screen. Atop an elephant, Hannibal came over the Alps and attacked Rome from the north at a time posing the greatest threat to the Republic. Hannibal was a skilled military tactician who led the troops into what is now Tunisia, not far from Sicily. His military victories during the Second Punic Wars are a legend and the story of Hannibal is something Hollywood has been intrigued by for decades. There are countless movies about or set in the Roman Empire. But it sometimes feel like Hollywood has forgot about Hannibal Barker, the Carthaginian general who terrorized Rome in his early years, but not anymore. And with good reason, Hannibal's story is so incredible that even the Romans admitted it. Imagine building a statue of your childhood bully in recognition of all the terrible ass kickings he delivered before you finally punched him in the face. Sure, Rome's empire might have been one of the longest lived and most powerful empires in 5,000 years of recorded history, but it was so beaten and humiliated by Hannibal that Rome eventually built a statue for him. Centuries before the BC AD changeover, Rome and the North African city of Carthage engaged in a series of wars that spanned almost 80 years. There were three of these Punic Wars, each shorter than the one before. It. They were so epic that historians still pour over things like the Fabian strategy, double envelopment, and unified command even at the US Army War College. Back in 264 BC, Rome was a shadow of what it would one day become, and Carthage was the regional powerhouse. The two first went to war over control of Sicily in that year, which was mainly fought at sea. The Romans won control of the island and pressed on to invade North Africa. It was there where the two engaged in a battle which featured almost 300,000 combatants, making it the largest naval battle in history by the number of troops involved. Carthage would sue for peace and pay reparations to end the war, but that's what led to Hannibal's rise. In 221 BC, the Carthaginian general, Hasdrubal the Fair, Viceroy of Iberia in what is today Spain, was assassinated, bringing his brother-in-law Hannibal Barca to prominence. The Second Punic War began after Hannibal, at 26 years old, laid siege to the roman allied city in spain and sacked it now listen uh 26 that's actually a year younger than i am right now you got to understand when we when we crack over the history books and we understand and we see what the legendary black men of yesterday was doing you got to understand they were doing it at, at a very young age now you could say yes the life expectancy during maybe in the past was shorter but still that's still crazy regardless brother that's still crazy regardless like when i think of even you know the haitian revolution when you look at guys like you know king henry christophe when Toussaint Louverture appointed him as the, the commanding general of the capital city in the colony back in like 1802, he was like, what, like 32 years old at the time, bro. You know, 32 years old going up against, you know, the French and the British and the Spanish and shit like that. You know, like a lot of our legendary ancestors was doing a lot of crazy things at a very young age, bro. Dudes was like 24 years old, you know what I mean? Like about to become a king and shit like that, like rich and powerful. Like that shit crazy, man. But let's continue. In 218, Hannibal famously crossed the Alps in 15 days with 20,000 troops, 6,000 cavalry, and some elephants. Rome's army had already gone into winter quarters, allowing Hannibal to absolutely crush every Roman force in northern Italy. What's worse for Rome was that Hannibal was not losing troops, but in fact was gaining them as more Roman allies defected over to his side. The Second Punic War saw Hannibal deliver the worst defeat by any army against another army in recorded history. Hannibal's troops killed 70,000 and 80,000 of Rome's 86,000 troops, making it the most lethal day of warfare until World War I. Listen, brother, keep in mind, the brother was like 28 years old back in that time, bro. Like, you got to understand, the black man of yesterday was on some other shit, boy. <laughs> the black man of yesterday was on some whole other type of time, man. Let's continue. Carthage kicked Roman armies around for nearly a decade. It wasn't until 210 BC 
when Roman general Scipio began to turn the tide. Scipio took the fight first to Carthaginian Iberia and then to Carthage itself. Carthage's allies began to defect as a large Roman army landed in North Africa. Hannibal was recalled to defend the city, met Scipio's army at Zama and was soundly beaten by an inferior Roman force. Hannibal escaped but Carthage would never be the same. Scipio earned the title Africanus after forcing Carthage into a humiliating peace that subjected the city-state to Roman oversight. Hannibal would eventually become a fugitive, attack Roman allies for different nations, and eventually kill himself after being cornered by Roman troops. Now, listen, obviously the movie has not come out yet. In fact, I don't even think they even have a name for the movie yet. The movie doesn't even have a name. It just has a script and a basic theme that they're trying to attack, but it's already a classic. You know what I'm saying? It's already a classic. Denzel Washington starring as the leading role. Now, what I don't like is the fact that Denzel Washington is, I don't think he's the right age to play Hannibal. Because when you play these legendary black men from the past, you need a young guy. You need a young man to play because these guys, like I said, they were very young in their time. When they was when they was on the throne, when they was in power, they were young boys. You know what I mean? They weren't elders. Denzel Washington is an elder. He's almost 70 years old. So you can't have Denzel Washington play a young, you know, 28 year old, you know, general. Like it's, it doesn't really work. You know, it doesn't really work unless you're talking about when the general was at his at his old age you know towards the end of his life or maybe you could play denzel washington could play his father who was uh Hamil hamilcar barker or something like that or one of his elders one of his mentors but i don't think that it's the right age but at the same time denzel washington playing hannibal barker that shit is still fire though that is still fire regardless of whatever i'm saying but i just don't think and that's my one disagreement with the casting but i think it's an interesting story but one thing i gotta say though one thing i gotta say i don't got no problems with the story of Hannibal Barker being told, but I think that we need more stories on West African black men, the black men from West Africa, Central Africa, East Africa, South Africa, what they call the what they call the allegedly so called the so called Sub Saharan black men. Yeah, I think we need them. Them stories got to be told, man. Them stories got to be told because so much of Africa's rich history, so much of the rich history of the continent came from the black men in those regions. Yeah, the black men in Central Africa, West Africa, East Africa, South Africa. Yeah, you know, shout out to the homies in North Africa though. But unfortunately, due to various events that occurred, such as the Arab conquest of North Africa and a lot of intermix across the mediterranean it's now become a debate as to whether the black men who were indigenous to that region were actually black men and we know yes they were black men of course but after centuries of you know invasions engagements intermixing cultural exchange now it's kind of you know it muddies the water so now it's even kind of controversial for some people they say oh hannibal was a white man they say hannibal barker was a white man you know it's just it's it's nuts man obviously we know hannibal barker was a black man just like the black man that they call the sub-saharan black man was also you know those are our brothers too but you know it is what it is that's why we need to tell the stories across the continent where the identity is not up for debate it's where it's not going to be no debate when we talk about the black man from west africa south africa central africa east africa we know ain't we know those were those were black men for real for real now we know hannibal was a black man too yeah we know the barker family was was, was a family of military generals black men you know a whole military family but you know like i said these things get put up for debate due to the various events that occurred to this the arab conquest of north africa i never i'm never gonna i'm never one to beg hollywood to tell my own story i say black men ourselves we should put the money up we should have our own movie studios we should create our own cast our own script and tell our own stories in the image that we want to portray that's my belief that's what i stand on you know that's what i stand on but regardless of what i say i'm still looking forward to this story i think i think it might be some fire regardless i think it might be some fire and one thing we got to understand the story of hannibal barker we, there's so many stories like that throughout history man there's so many stories like that throughout history where black men engage with these these men from different locations and we smack them boys up man like it wasn't only the Haitian revolution where that happened bro that happened across the african continent man it's so many stories you could tell you know for example they could be you can make a movie based on the ashati king back in 1823 who smacked up the british and, and captured the british general and cut off his head who was that uh who was the king of the ashanti back in that time i think that was some dude named uh Ose Bansu Kwame or something like that. He was the Asante Henny back at the back in like 1823. You can make a movie on him. You can make movies on, you know, obviously people talk about Mansa Musa, but those are common. That's cliche at this point, you know. You could talk about Iware the Great. I believe he was the first king of the Benin Empire. You know, but the controversial thing about these stories, if you want to make movies about these stories, you cannot be upset when you see our ancestors fighting against other black men. You know, when you when you talk, even when you talk about the story of Shaka Zulu, Shaka Zulu mainly spent his military career going up against other black men now i don't have a problem with that i don't i don't take that away from our ancestors because they was going toe-to-toe -to -toe battling for power i mean it is what it is i mean africa was the center of commerce center of trade during that time so obviously black men would be you know duking it out trying to become the most powerful man in the land but that's the one thing but also it's so many stories you could tell 
in fact, there's never been a movie on the Haitian Revolution yet. So it's like, it's so many stories. That's why I say whoever is going to be the man who got the money, who's going to put these stories together, you're going to make a lot of money. It's going to be a big success because nobody has ever decided to tread into those territories before. Everybody is scared to tell these stories about these ancient black men back in the day. I don't know. We got a thousand different movies and all these white men throughout history. But we, for whatever reason, we do not have a large catalog of movies, big budget movies based on a black man from ancient times. And whoever is going to be the one that dives into those stories and makes amazing and movies you're gonna make a lot of money you're gonna make a whole lot of money off the top of my head anybody who makes a movie on Sunny ali from the sungai empire from king and zinga from angola from king benazin of dahomey now we just got the woman king you know like six months ago and that shit was some fire that shit was some fire too but you really if if they made a movie based on the dahomey kingdom it really should have been against it really should have been based on king benazin when he went against the french you know when he went against the french and yeah the franco dahomeyan wars i think that would have been a better setting for the for the story but it is what it is you know you could talk about the ethiopian kings there was many there was many ethiopian kings you can make a movie on you could talk about even when you're going to go back to south africa king sechawayo king mzilikazi who else could you talk about king Askia the great of the song high empire samurai Torre, king alfonso of the congo kingdom i mean bro it's really bro telling you it's so many it's just so it's just it's so many bro it's so many you can make a movie based on pharaoh tahaka uh pharaoh shabaka whoever dives into these stories and makes a movie based on them you're gonna make a whole lot of money your kids are gonna be rich forever i'm telling you right now i'm telling you right now now i want to talk about hannibal coming in riding into rome on the elephants right we got to talk about hannibal riding in <laughs> yo boy the black and keep in mind like i told you he was like 27 years old when he was when he rode in on the goddamn elephants i think it was bro so that was insane. Imagine a young 26-year-old black man riding in on an elephants with 20,000 deep, 20,000 soldiers. Bruh, I don't think y'all understand how crazy that story is. Now, first of all, it's not like you could just grab a random elephant out the goddamn jungle and be like, we we about to ride down on the white boys in Rome. No, you had to train the big motherfucker. You had to train the elephant, domesticate the elephant, master the elephant, hop on top of the elephant, control the elephant, guide the elephant, and then ride into battle. That on top of the elephant. Like, it's crazy. And the purpose of that mainly, in my opinion, as someone who never rode into battle on top of an elephant, I can only assume, I think it was mainly for like intimidation and shock value. Because when you come in, if you're on foot or you, you know, back in ancient times, like over 2000 years ago, and you see, you know, homie coming in on a goddamn elephant, you might've never seen some shit like that in your life. A lot of shit in, in military engagement really just be for intimidation and shock value. It really just to be, it really is just to demoralize the enemy and really break down the morale, break down their lines, break down their, break down their courage, break down their valor and really get into their head it's really like psychological mind games in my opinion right that, that's what i think also it gives you an advantage of having the high ground right so you have a, a, a vantage point of the entire battlefield you're on top of the goddamn elephant you got a clear view of everything in front of you as you ride down and destroy the enemy and also it wasn't just elephants as we mentioned before hannibal came in thousands deep with the cavalry troops as well so listen he had the he had the goddamn elephants he had the horses he had the goddamn infantry troops on the front lines Listen, brother, Hannibal came in like a gangster. <laughs> Hannibal came in like a gangster. And I repeat, I repeat, he did all this shit around my age, around my age. That's why I say the black man of yesterday was on some different type of time, boy. It was on some different type of time. Yo, boy, that's crazy, man. <laughs> that's why we got to study our forefathers, man. So we got to study the black men that came before us. So we, we really understand what it is, man. You know, I'm telling you, when you understand what the black men did before you, it gives you a different type of energy. It gives you a different type of worldview. It gives you a different type of mindset for real. You know, that's why you got to study history, man. That's why you got to study history. But anyway, it's your boy Never Card. That's Celine back in the building. Yes, indeed. Cash app up on the screen, and I'm gone. Peace. Reincarnated, I'm back in original fashion. I left on a horse and came back in that ass, and I left with abundance and came back to famine. We used to be pyramids, now we be rapping. Look how the mighty have fallen. Used to be running, now we be walking. When you be cooning, that's when they applauded. Selling your soul, your sons and your daughter. Gotta come up in this shit. They stuck in the mix. Really, my heart it be breaking. That's why I'm stacking that paper and handle my business. Pass it down in generation. Talking about money and power and building a nation. That's a deadly combination. Never be watching the TV, they pushing the genus. Falsifying information. Now they got malice intentions. Step in the room and I'm feeling the tension. Enemy watching me, blocking my vision. Care for the check, cause I need my redemption. Building my kingdom, I need to protect it. Ready for war like a young money Congo. Never decided the team is the motto. Up in the crib and I'm whipping up waffles. Up in the crib and I'm smoking gelato. I'm chilling, I'm taking my pain.
and then make it ambition. I'm blessed by the gods, but I ain't religious. I can't feel the power, they can't feel the bitch. They make a no out with it, wage. I got business. This shit is an art, and it can never be taught. Selling my soul, I can never be bought. Play with my money, I see you ain't caught. Run to the check, and I do it for sport. Babylon falling, I go to the source. Packing my luggage and go overseas. Shorty be with me, and she so at least. Shorty be chosen, I'm calling her Hershey. Secret intelligence probably gonna murder me. Don't fuck with brands, cause nigga, I'm Haitian. Say the wrong shit, and you're smacking their faces.